Hey, before we start with the main video, I would like to thank you the following companies for their support. They support me through the YouTube membership program that I created for companies who care about software testing and are active in supporting the testing community. Thank you once again. If you want to learn more about the supporters, check the video description down below to find the links to their products. If you miss your logo on this page, follow the QR code or send me an email. Happy testing and now back to the main video. Hey testing community, welcome back to my YouTube channel Software Testing. Today I'm going to talk about integration testing and why this is so important and many of maybe you and others in the community, also among developers, doing it wrong or not doing it at all. And hopefully that video uh, is going to help you to do more integration testing. And let's get started. What is it? What is integration testing all about? So what is integration testing? Integration testing is a technique that checks the intersections between different modules, components of your tech stack. Really theoretical. I mean, if you know the test pyramid, the famous one, we have a unit test underneath. So we can test isolated components um, in a more isolated way. That, uh, let's use an example. We have a calculator and that calculator can do, um, you can, you can, you can um, sum numbers. So you say one plus two is three. So you can test this, right? You can test this more isolated. You have a method that is doing exactly that operation. You put in two parameters and you do some unit testing, some happy cases and stuff like that. But how is it going to, if you have like this operation combined with um, subtractions and other operations, and then you have different components, different units, then you could test integrate together as a whole, as a, um, as a calculator, for example. And this is so important because it really checks the intersection between different modules and also APIs. And because there a lot of stuff is going to happen. And that's why I thought the video might be helpful. Yeah. It is usually the next logical step after unit tests, as I just said, and before more high level tests such as system or end to end tests. Yeah. So if you take a look again, or like in your minds, I don't have the pyramid in the slides pyramid. We have the foundation layer of unit tests. We have then sometimes depending on who is drawing the pyramid, like a system layer. And then we have on top of uh, the end to end layer, but the system layer for me is too, too big already because you could like narrow it down to integration testing, API testing. Then you have more like integrated system testing end to end testing. And that's why I think integration testing can be done like more fine granular than in a, in a bigger scale. Yeah, and that's important. Um, the main focus is to verify that a single component can work together. The single components, that's the word. Yeah. So as I mentioned with the calculator example, you have different little tiny units. They work independently perfectly together. But once you integrate them, yeah, you, uh, once they share data with each other, then we have integration testing. That's, that's really important because imagine the calculator has four teams with all the main operations. Uh, and each team is building one component. Yeah. And then you do like the integration testing together. And if you don't have well-defined APIs, interfaces, um, usually you will find some issues, right? What's going to happen if you put like a negative number into the next module or what is if you put like some characters into the next module and these kind of topics, this can be done with integration testing on a more low level section of the pyramid, fast in execution. And it's much, yeah, better, I would say, than doing like a calculator test, let's say from an UI interface. Something that you can do as well to check some user journeys again on top with end to end testing. But I would more focusing on integration testing, individual components together integrated, what can go wrong. Yeah, and it's there to identify any potential bugs or issues when components are combined. Yeah, and that uh, the last point for this one is with integration testing, you can verify that at least two components can work together. And that's the, that's the thing. It's also in the name integration. You integrate two components, at least two, and try to see what's going to happen. Yeah. So that's some more theoretical definitions. Yeah. And why is it so important? I mean, you can already imagine. I mean, it's like early detection of potential issues that might occur with the interfaces between different modules and components. And that's what I, I've also seen in my career, um, more on a high level abstract layer. But if you work with multiple teams, 
it usually boiled down when we had problems and issues to, to communication. So we had two teams and we were not really well talking to each other and it boiled down to communication, bad communication. And it's also not the interface, communication the interface, like voice or text or whatever, how we communicate. And that's the same thing for, for modules. If then the API, as I said before, is not well described, not documented, you don't have, let's say, some service level agreements, it will fail. And with integration testing, you can freely find early enough those issues. Yeah. Overall, if you do it uh, much, much more often and more integrated, you have better code quality. Uh, you have a reduced risk of system failure, which is more or less there for, for every uh, testing technique that we can use. Faster time to market, because I also think that if you have unit tests, you do some more integration tests, those tests can be executed much faster. You don't have to have like the complete stack available and stuff like that, right? So you can react much faster. And they're much easier to perform compared to end-to-end -to -end testing. I have seen many teams in my career saying, okay, we have automation in place. And then we talk and say, okay, they just have end-to-end -end tests from a browser perspective, from a mobile uh, interface perspective, but they haven't done any unit tests, any integration tests, and, but they were always complaining like, oh, our tests are so slow, they're so flaky, they're not working reliable in these kind of topics. You know why? That's why. Do more integration testing. So here are four types of integration testing. Um, first one is the top-down approach. So the first one, it says it's focus on the main modules first. So what are your main modules in your application? Focus on them first, integrate them first. Then focus on the sub-modules, like main modules, focus them together, then go to sub-modules. So it's like the top-down approach. Yeah? Bottom-up is the opposite, of course. You first concentrate on sub-modules in your application, your tech stack, integrate them, test them together, and then focus on top of the of the main modules because depending on your system architecture you might have like small sub modules that can you can first integrate if they work together you can have like one module that is being integrated together and then you have another module has sub modules and you can you know like towards the uh, pyramid um, there's also mixed or sandwich approach it combines the two of them um, it can be the best solution to test integrations for main module and sub module at the same time. So depending on your tech stack, it's sometimes not easy to say, okay, let's focus first top down or bottom up. Sometimes it really depends on which modules are ready to test, how they can integrate it and how also the data flow is in your architecture. Or the big bang approach, right? Like all the components are tested at the same time, throw everything together. Mm can be an idea, not maybe the best one, because it can case in case of problems, it might be harder to identify where the root cause happened, right? And which module the, the cause is. So not, not the best one. I would go for the mixed one to see like, depending on your architecture, to, to be more flexible in that regard. Yeah. So what are key features? Um, handle various integration with technologies like REST APIs, SOAP, messaging queues, databases, or APIs are main key features that you can use uh, or if, um, in the integration testing phases. Um, it's able to help you with managing your test data, supporting test data, data-driven testing the other way around. So really, uh, if you have lots of the data, test data, integration testing can help you to pump the test data into those integrations and yeah, give you some more support in data-driven testing. Yeah. What is really important for integration testing tools is they must be easy to use. I mean, I've, I'm, I'm telling this <coughs> in, in many videos that I've done. If an integration testing tool or other tools are really complicated and complex to set up, to install, to configure, don't use them. I mean, the tool should be easy, like a hammer. You pick the hammer, you can use the hammer to, to put something into the wall, like a nail, and that's it. That's a hammer. You don't have to to, to, put, to connect the hammer, build it, screw something in and put it down and stuff. And nobody would like to use it. It should be easy. Same for automation tools. Yeah, They have to use or must support, of course, the ICD integration for sure. Otherwise, they're more they're useless. It, they have to be integrated in the CICD pipeline. But that's, that's always the case, I would say, for modern tools. Um, they must offer reporting features. Also important, without any reportings, it's useless. Yeah, they have done some testing, but what? What went wrong? What are the issues and stuff like that? So there must be reportings. Um, the tool should be able to handle different platforms. Yeah, that would be nice if you can do like integration testing with on uh, different tech stacks, backend APIs or mobile frontends, web browsers and stuff like that. Would be nice to have. 
in case you have a complicated tech stack or a different tech stack that is not handling in that way of the integration testing tools, combine tools. That's what I always tell people, like combine tools that fit best your environment. Yeah? Before you select a tool, I mean, I've, I think I copied that slide, I mean, already 10 times for, for this channel. There is no one size fits all solution. That's important. Yeah, Before you select a tool, don't just blindly jump on the next high band wagon. It's not possible that every tool is or that a tool fits for all your problems. Yeah, So use always a combination of tools depending on your product, what I mentioned before. For integration testing, programming skills are required. You have to have programming skills, otherwise you will lose. Define selection criteria when searching for test automation, strike test automation, I copy that slide, integration testing tool. Yes, write down your goals. What are your criteria for the tool? What are your requirements? Write them down and then go and find your tool because there are a lot of tools out there. You can see that in a second. And I made a video on it, like how to select the right mobile test automation tool. It was more mobile focused, but I gave even more insights on how to select the right tools. Uh, if you'd like to know it uh, more about it, check the video down below or check on my YouTube channel, search for it and you will find it. So here is a list of integration testing tools. I'm not going through all the details on each and every tools and I just read them out now. I did some research and these are integration testing tools for various platforms. So there's Protector, Jasmine, Citrus, Selenium, Fitness, Testigma, Catalan, Trascendus Tosca, Test Complete, Runorex, PyTest, JUnit, TestNG, Spock, Postman, SOPUR, LeapWork, Tessie, LDRR, and many, many more. Some of them are paid tools, some of them are open source tools, but the list continues on and on and on. Yeah, just I put all the links down in the video description for all the tools so you can follow up on them. But um, if you're not doing integration testing, please do so. Yeah, it's so important. It's easier to set up than any high level automation frameworks that you have and they will give you some more insights into your code quality, how you work together with different modules, sub-modules, and they provide fast feedback. And that's, I think, the best and the biggest benefit out of it. So I think that's it for today. Let me know down in the comments which integration testing tool are you using and why are you using integration testing tools. I would love to hear your, um, your, your opinions on that, your feedback on today's video. Do you think integration testing is good to do or not? Happy to read out everything from you. With that, saying thank you. As always, like it, share it, and subscribe it. Have a great day and see you soon.